Cortisol plays a very important role in everything from how the body uses sugar to the regulation of your blood pressure to the function of your immune system. What is cortisol and how does cortisol affect depression? Now, I know that cortisol is mostly associated with stress. It's actually a steroid hormone, and it's produced by the adrenal glands. And that's why they call it the stress hormone. Cortisol levels can change in everybody. I mean, everybody's biochemistry is different. Um, those cortisol, your cortisol levels can be uh, different in genders. It can be different depending on your age. It can be different depending on your health history even the time of the day. Uh, in general, cortisol levels are higher in the morning and they usually decrease as the day goes on and the lowest levels are usually around midnight. But whenever you do have your cortisol levels go up and if they stay up for, you know, that's your fight or flight response, that's your reaction to stress, although now we have so many stressors affecting us. Even the news um, will affect your cortisol levels or reading something negative in the newspaper or being around negative people. Um, a chronic state can, can actually damage your tissues and be one of the causes, one of the root causes of degenerative conditions. And not only degenerative conditions, but it can also... Uh, alter the way that your body uses glucose and it can prevent your muscles and your body from absorbing and metabolizing amino acids as well. So cortisol plays a very important role in everything from how the body uses sugar to the regulation of your blood pressure to the function of your immune system and again, that also is linked to the sympathetic versus the parasympathetic nervous system. What we should be living our life the majority of time in, 90% of the time, we should be in the parasympathetic. The parasympathetic is when we're calm. We just got done meditating after a meal. Um, really, we should, we, we should live our lives. Our bodies were designed to be happy calm, laugh, you know, incorporating laughter, and not to be living in a constant state of stress. I mean, that's why everybody's adrenal glands are burned out, and that's why one of the root causes to reducing the body's self-healing mechanism, and one of the causes for the steps or the procedures for the disease process. Another thing that sustained or chronic stress can lead to is a reduced serotonin and other neurotransmitters in the brain, including dopamine. And that's where your depression ends up coming in or the anxiety or any type of what we're labeling today as mental illness. For a long time, I've said that that's, you know, that's not mental illness. The psychiatry industry uh, makes trillions of dollars on prescription medications to deal with mental illness instead of dealing with the root cause of mental illness. Now, I, you know, I'm not saying mental illness isn't real. I mean, you know, that's part of what we go through in life. We go through stages of anger. We go through stages of depression. We go through stages of uh, lack of self-confidence, um, you know, PTSD. We go, we, you know, there are a lot of individuals out there that suffer from unhappiness and these mental conditions. And I'm a big believer in trying to do my best to help those individuals, especially I've been working with military that have been coming back, that have situations they're trying to deal with, suicides, actually a lot of the bipolar medications and a lot of the prescription medications that the psychiatry industry prescribe actually cause suicidal thoughts and can cause even further mental conditions. So how does that affect, how does that relate to cortisol? Well, 
That's how it relates to cortisol is because cortisol, high cortisol levels can alter the production of those neurotransmitters or those brain chemicals that can actually keep you happy and healthy as well as, you know, altering the gut, which I always come back to. So too much cortisol in the blood for, for a period of time can le also lead to high blood pressure. If you have a flushed face, you know, see when people get stressed out, but if, if people have a red face for a long period of time, kind of a, a puffy red face, you can usually look at somebody and tell if they have high states of stress or alcoholism because usually their feet will be red and puffy and their face will be red and puffy. But one of the big things with excess cortisol is muscle weakness and fatigue. And if you're thirsty all the time, you know, that's another sign because when you're in that state, that sympathetic state, your blood flow immediately goes to the organs. And what happens is your, your gut or your digestive system completely shuts down when you're in a sympathetic state or when you're in a state of stress. And that is not a good thing at all, especially when people eat in a sympathetic state. Weight gain is also uh, common for people who have chronic cortisol levels and osteoporosis. If you bruise really easily, if you have any purple stretch marks appearing on your skin, uh, and also a decreased sex drive would be associated with too much cortisol. Uh, I personally believe you can associate, you know, toxicity, whether it's toxicity coming from the air, food, or water, or if it's toxicity coming from your own body, with many, many, many different type of negative symptoms that you may be suffering from because it's an imbalance of the body, mind, and soul, or the spirit, because of the toxic environment in which you're living or that your body is going through, which is the root cause of disease. Now, some of the, some of the methods that I've used in the past to reduce my own cortisol levels or to help people reduce their cortisol levels, <clears throat> some of the most affected me effective methods that I've found, number one is sleep. Because when we started asking questions to people about why their cortisol levels might be high, why their adrenals might be burned out, a very common, common answer is that they're having insomnia or difficulty sleeping. And, and sleep is one of those free remedies that has, you know, you could take all the different remedies out there and combine them and spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on stuff or take sleep pills or whatever, but you're still not addressing the root cause and everything is in simplicity. And if you just look at why you're not sleeping effectively, which could mean that you have a smart meter outside your house or you you're sleeping next to your laptop or you have harmful electromagnetic radiation in your bedroom or you have a memory foam mattress and you're breathing toxic fire retardants all night long or you're not going to bed early enough or you're not, you know, in order to win the mornings, which I talk so much about, you need to win the evenings before you go to bed. So sleep is very, very important, not only to reduce cortisol levels, not only for uh, a remedy for depression and many other things, but sleep is one of those things that we need. Our bodies need sleep to regenerate and repair our system. So another thing that uh, I always recommend to everybody to reduce their cortisol levels, and this can be done you know, in a very short period of time is meditation. You can take a five minute break and go meditate and meditation, just calming your mind, relaxing, getting yourself in a state that starts calming you down. And that in meditation also can go into breathing. I love the Wim Hof method. Like I, I think one of the fastest ways, well, Science proved that one of the fastest ways to go from a sympathetic state or a very high state of stress to a low state of stress and switch your body from sympathetic into parasympathetic was doing nine deep breaths. And they found that doing nine deep breaths 
will bring you from a sympathetic into a parasympathetic state. Now, I do that and it works, but I also have been practicing the Wim Hof Method. And if you don't know what that is, go to WimHofMethod.com and learn about those breathing techniques because it's a fantastic way to control not only your breathing and your stress levels, but also be able to control your immune system with your mind. So uh, deep breathing, meditation, sleep, healthy eating also reduces uh, cortisol levels. So always recommend eating organic foods. Eat as, eat as least as possible, actually. Practice intermittent fasting. You know, just start off by skipping one meal a day, and that'll do you a lot of good. Drink more water. One of the things we noticed with uh, people with high cortisol levels was they were dehydrated most of the time. And, and honestly, I would probably say 95 to 98% of the population right now in the world is chronically dehydrated. See, I ask people all the time, it's like, what do you drink during the day? Okay, I drink milk, I drink soda, I drink alcohol, I drink tea, I drink fruit juices, I drink this, I drink that. But nobody is out there drinking water. Like you should be saying, I drink water, I drink water, I drink water, I drink water, I drink a cup of coffee in the morning, and that's about it. It's not, it's not, if you just, I'm not saying give up everything that you're drinking and just drink water, although that would be a perfect scenario. All I'm saying is just drink water 90% of the time and have the other 10% of the time for like your green juice, organic green juice, or any other liquids that you might, kombucha actually is, is a very healthy drink with good minerals and probiotics in it. Believe it or not, sunlight, I'm a big believer in sunlight and spending time out in the sun. I am totally against all of the medical uh, theories out there that are saying the sun is bad for you, don't get out in the sun, the sun causes cancer. We did not have hardly any cases of skin cancer before people started slathering on all kinds of chemical-based sunblocks which contain pretty much every single chemical in a sunblock spray or cream is a cancer-causing agent. So if you put 50 cancer-causing agents on your skin and then you go out in the sun and you heat up the skin and all those cancer-causing agents soak right into the skin, so our skin cancer rates have quadrupled, probably even more than that since the introduction of sunscreen. So sunlight, I'm not saying like get out in the middle of the day and burn yourself. I mean, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is just expose your body to sunlight and allow your body to produce vitamin D, which is a healing agent, which will reduce your cortisol levels and reduce your depression, since that, that's what we're really talking about here. Even if you want to go one step further and do sun gazing in the morning, if you want to do, uh, go sun gazing in the afternoon, you can do that as well. But sun was there, is there for a reason. Sun is energy and sun he helps heal your body. Massage, like uh, doing a massage once a week is also really good to lower your cortisol levels because you're just in a state of relaxation, hopefully. You're not going to be stressed out laying on a massage table. I mean, I hope not anyway. I mean, that's your time you're taking for yourself. And then one of my favorite is laughter and happiness because laughter and happiness automatically puts you in a, in a parasympathetic state. You know, you can watch, I mean, I like to watch America's Funniest Home Videos or stuff like that. My kids love that and just laugh. I mean, it's, laughter is, again, it's free. Sunlight's free. Intermittent fasting is fairly free. Water, purified water is not that expensive to, to, to drink. You know, breathing clean air, going out in nature, meditating, doing deep breathing techniques. I mean, all these things are free things that you can do that work just as good, if not better, than anything you're going to pay for when you're trying to address high cortisol levels or if you're trying to address adrenal burnout or if you're trying to address depression. 
So if you have any additional questions regarding cortisol, how it's linked to depression, how it's linked to low energy or fatigue, if you have any other suggestions, please feel free to put those in the comments and we'll try to link some additional articles uh, that we have in down below so you'll be able to access those and to do a little bit more research. 